opportunity to spring a big upset. In fact, he's quite a confident young guy, isn't he, Arnie? Yeah, I think you got to ride off the Lonnie Bradley fight. He has no business going down to 160 pounds. He sweated off a lot of weight to take that at very short notice. I like him in the Mike Cedillo fight. If the fighter that I saw against Mike Cedillo shows up here tonight and it's the wrong Tony, this fight's going to go different than what Jackie Callen's planning for James Tony this evening. All right, so let's see how James don't Tony does here tonight in this light heavyweight battle against Carl Willis. For all the official numbers, let's go up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world on Prime, we welcome you to the feature bout of the evening brought to you by Fight Night at the Palace Incorporated and international events and sponsored by Metro 25 Tires and Budweiser, the undisputed king of beers. This bout is sanctioned by the Michigan State Board of Control, the Chairman Dale Grable, introducing to you the judge scoring this bout from uh, ringside. Herman McAlpine uh, Jr., Dario Chiarini, and Charles Fisse. Introducing to you the referee in charge of this bout, Dale uh, Grable. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, a light heavyweight special attraction scheduled for 10 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the red corner, he is wearing black trunks with white trim and fighting out of Clarksville, Tennessee. He weighed in at 174 pounds. His record includes 21 wins, only two losses, one draw with 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Welcome a fighter they call the Scorpion, Carl. I'm here to enforce those rules, gentlemen. Protect yourself at all times. Listen to my commands. Touch them up. Come out. Okay, Rich, they're both the same age, even though Tony started fighting four years earlier. Around the same height, Tony comes in at the second heaviest he's ever been in his pro career. 179, and he's got a two-inch reach advantage over Carl Willis. All right, this bout will be fought under the rules of the state of Michigan. Three knockdown rule is in effect. There is a standing eight count, and after an accidental butt, they will go to the cart after half the distance of the fight. And that would be, of course, in this uh, fight, a five-round uh, distance, or it would be declared a technical draw. So there is a three knockdown. There is a standing eight. We are ready for action, and here we go in the round one. James Tony comes out with a very purposeful look on his face at the opening bell and goes right to Carl Willis. And watch for Willis to switch the southpaw, fight righty, move around, a lot of quick stick and jab. Tony says he wants to have fights now where he doesn't leave it in the hands of the judges anymore. He feels he was really robbed in his fight with Montel Griffin. I must admit, uh, Arnie, that I felt that was a bad decision, you know, the decision that went against Tony. And he hurts, I think, Willis there with a little left hook. Uh, his right leg went for a little skate, it looked like, but he recovers quickly, Willis does. Definitely took a rest there for a pregnant pause, and Tony hit him with the left hook. You know, a lot of people right now, you won't know for a couple of more fights just what the story is with Tony, uh, even if he wins a couple more. Uh, you know, in reviewing his record, he started pro in 1988. Even though he's only 26 years of age, he's been fighting since 88. He's had 48 professional fights already. In terms of a boxer's chronology, he should be on the downside instead of the upside, which he might very well be. 
You saw that right hand from Willis caused uh, Tony to take a step backwards momentarily. Bounced right back up, though. And make no mistake, Willis has punching power. He's got 16 knockouts in those 21 wins. He can punch. He's been known to give you a little butt in the inside, too, which he did to Mike Cedillo quite often. And as I mentioned earlier, he can switch to southpaw at any moment. skills and all of the different punches in a well-positioned arsenal. Probably not remembered for any single punch in his career, but uses a variety of punish, punishing type punches with, with which he wears down the adversary. No, when Tony's on, he'll show you all kinds of different looks and, and will adapt different looks to different fighters. In the middle rounds, he's prone to lay on the ropes and try to lull somebody in. Doesn't seem to be what he's doing tonight, though. Seems to be coming out very fast, although he looks very soft around the middle, and as I mentioned, the second heaviest he's ever weighed for a fight at 179 pounds. Half minutes ago in round one. black trunks with the white trim. James Tony and the Colors of the Galaxy stable. He's added a skull and crossbones, though, to his repertoire on his trunk, as Willis begins to punch, and we come to the end of round number one. Watch for Willis's head. We begin round two. James Tony, screen right. Carl Willis in the black trunks with the white trim. Now on the right side of your screen. Tony, of course, a big favorite based on his uh, great record. And Willis stepping uh, way up in class. Now, I would say the biggest name that, that Willis has fought to date was probably Mike Cedillo or maybe even Lonnie Bradley, who's on his way up. Certainly nobody in Tony's class. 1994, I guess you could consider a bittersweet year for Tony. Boy, he had a great start to it with his spectacular victory at the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles over Tim Little. And then the victory over Prince Charles Williams in the last round with the knockout. But then, of course, came the Roy Jones fight, which is what most people talk about, it seems like, now when they talk about James Tony. Well, you know, Jackie Callen has his hands full with him for a lot of reasons, not just the publicized ones. It's hard to keep him in the gym and training. And so, consequently, he's had a lot more bouts because she wants to keep him busy. You shouldn't be coming off a Prince Charles Williams fight in July and fighting Roy Jones in November. A fighter of his stature and making the money that he's making doesn't have to and didn't have to fight as often as he did. Carl Willis was willing to trade with Tony, and it cost him there as he ate a right hand from the former champion. He's bleeding from the nose now in this second round, Willis is. Sweating quite profusely and seem, seemingly wearing down a little bit here in round two. I'm surprised Willis doesn't have his jab going here at all. If he wants to keep Tony off, he should be popping that jab. He's got to be snapping a double, triple jab if he's going to fight Tony on the outside. Otherwise, Tony's just walking in. He's, got, he's offering nothing to keep Tony off him right now. And one jab's not going to do it. side of the face underneath the eye of Willis as well. Tony, watch how he, look how he's cutting off the ring on Willis, not leaving him any escape route. He actually backs up. Oh, and he just threw that head right into that cut as well. And a little insult to that injury. Inside a half minute to go in round two. Rich Marana, Arnie Rosenthal, ringside at the Palace of Auburn Hills. You're watching Prime Championship Boxing. Former two-time world champion James Tony. Getting hit, but then showing some of the 
defensive skills, which we've seen in a lot of his fights as well. Loving that body. Loves to dip that left shoulder. I thought one of the greatest defensive performances we've seen in recent years was his fight against Iran Barkley, when Barkley just could not hit him in that fight. It was an incredible defensive showing by Tony, who goes down now and sits down in front of the venerable trainer, Bill Miller, and across the way we look at Wilson. And they got their work cut out. That's Rick Conti in the corner there. He's got his work cut out on that cut. They've done a good job in the past, though. Willis tends to cut. He was cut very badly in the Padillo fight. Still managed to go the full 12. But he's not doing anything to keep Tony off. And we take a look at action here from, from round number two. Tony, very aggressive, moving in, keeping Willis off balance. But Willis didn't do anything. He's allowing Tony to walk in like that. The jab's not going to do him any good once Tony's on the inside, Rich. Tony has been sharp so far tonight. Still on his stool, across the ring. Willis looking at him. You got the same look at James Tony as Carl Willis did coming out of the corner. Tony cuts the ring on uh, Willis. Willis trying to he really move in a circular fashion there. Tony, an expert in the skills of boxing. And the right hand. Tony punching in combinations tonight. And, and Willis doing nothing to keep him off. He's not keeping that jab out of there. He wants to survive strictly on moving with the legs. He's got to keep the jab out. Willis can move some, moving some tonight. He's strong. He's got good stamina. He had a lot of first and second round KOs early in his career, but that was against very low-level opposition. Tony just really looks purposeful tonight. Well, as we said in the open, you're coming off two losses, which is something that we never thought we'd be talking about at this point in time. You have a must-win situation here. He's already got his next fight schedule. He'll be fighting for the USBA title. And that is against one of uh, Arnie Rosenthal, my partner's fighters, Anthony Hamber. Is there a date on that? April 30th on the CBS Network. That's why, uh, should James Tony win this fight, Rich, I'm going to give the pleasure of the post-fight interview to you so that Tony and I don't wind up... Is that for safety reasons? <laughs> <laughs> Halfway through round three. I don't want him to uh, insult me and really get Hembrick mad at him. Well, James, buddy, I, I can't recall any fighter who was a champion, and certainly at the level of that he held the championship and for the amount of time that he did, who was more active this guy. I mean, just fighting even non-title fights as well as title fights. He would fight as a matter of course, and every year in the 90s, five, six, seven fights a year. In 1990, he fought ten times. I mean, it gives you an idea. He's fought, that's what I was saying earlier, since 1988, he turned pro late in 88. So essentially, since 1989, he's had 48 fights. A lot of, a lot of leg wear, a lot of body wear, and he's a fighter that likes to balloon up. Even if he's off for just four or six weeks, he's going to put on 20 pounds. So you take that weight off, you take it on, it's got wear and tear on you. And I think some of that wear and tear is what we saw in the Roy Jones and even in the Montel Griffin fight, but we're not seeing it tonight. Looking very good thus far. Right to the body that time, and then a lift up to the head by James Tony. Good stiff jab there by Tony. Ten seconds to go in the round. Round number four coming up on Prime. Third round action, and you see what's happening here is Carl Willis is trying to throw a jab from the inside. He's off balance, and James Tony pretty much having his way with him at this point. Tony moving forward, was told by his trainer, Bill Miller, not to forget the body. Arnie, we can't see the upper reaches here of uh, this beautiful building, the Palace of Auburn Hills. We estimated that the crowd was around 12,000 earlier tonight. It's dark up there, so we really can't see. We've just been handed the attendance figures here tonight. 18,165 fans have packed the palace here to watch James Tony and Bronco McCartney. I'm not sure. That's probably a boxing record, though, for the palace.
can wonder at this point, and we probably will never know the real answer, if James Tony was more diligent in his training and didn't have a tendency to put on big weight between fights, and he stayed at either 160 or 168, what a devastating fighter he could have been down there. Good counter right hand by Tony. One of his skills is counter punching. There's another right hand by James over the top. Tony, of course, had trouble taking off the considerable weight he had in that last fight uh, or before the jaw. He was training for a long time. He was just having trouble taking it off. Oh, relative cut. Big cut, a lot of blood. You can't tell if it's coming from his nose or his cheek is cut. And he's fighting a totally wrong fight, totally different than he said he would fight Tony also. He's not sticking and jabbing. He's not moving. And now he's trying to get into a brawl on the inside. Showing a lot of guts and heart. But not a great strategy. I believe that blood was from the nose. It just got smeared. Arnie is no longer on the face. I agree. Right hand there by Willis. Tony Workman-like trying to step it up. Yeah, there's a good stiff jab from Willis. But then he comes walking back in. Oh, he's Dale Grable says, warns Tony, says, I said stop punching. Uh, Tony punching on the break there, and he did get a good left hook, and it splattered the blood again. And Will is turning Carlos. into a punching bag at this point, Rich. He's offering no offense whatsoever. of Willis, it's only round four, and he looks more than just jaded at this point. And Tony just looked down at us as if to say, come on, how do you, how do you like my performance? And he shot at the glare. And I just got a nice hunk of uh, Carl Willis' blood all over me. At the end of the round. Do you want to make... All right, back at the Palace of Auburn Hills as we begin round five to make matters worse for Carl Willis. They fought after the bell. A few seconds after the bell, and referee Dale Grable deducted a point from Willis as well for what he called unsportsmanlike combat. So it was either 15 yards or a point. And it was a point he couldn't afford to give away at this point. I don't know if he's going to be around, though, to see the decision, so I don't think it's going to be totally academic. He's bleeding from every place on his face that he could possibly bleed from now. A lot of blood uh, coming from the nose. They just came out stem and bleeding from the nose of Carl Willis. Good right hand by Willis. Tony will often turn away from those rights. He puts his shoulder up there. It's a, it's a neat little defensive trick that James has developed through the course of his distinguished career. And it's a very awkward one to, to combat against. breaking down Carl Willis. Willis is showing guts here by continuing, but I think his corner, if it continues at this pace, may have to think about uh, stopping this fight. Well, I guess they're coming from, at least at this point, Willis is a bit of a puncher. He's had 16 knockouts in his 21 wins. They're going to feel he's got a punch of chance on the inside. He tried to throw a right there, and Tony backed him up with his own right. Tony hitting him from all angles now, landed a nice uppercut in there as well. And Will is offering no offense as he backpedals, and Tony just stalking him. Will is having trouble breathing right now, too, because of the nose bleeding. He's got his mouth open because when he tries to breathe through his nose, all he's going to do is swallow blood. He's going to wind up getting his jaw broken this way if they can't stem the flow of blood from his nose. You can see the blood come flying out of his mouth as well. A nice left hook by Tony, but he just grazed the face of Willis. Tony with a lot of power and snap. There is Willis trying to jab. of the night. Notice, though, he didn't go running in, though, to try to double it up or triple it up. He allowed Tony to shake it off. He was happy to land the one punch stay on the outside. And Tony just kind of paused for a second. Said, all right. Back to it. Tony marches forward with 10 seconds. 
seconds to go in round five. That's another one in the bank for James Stoney. Scheduled for 10. This is prime championship boxing. Coming to you tonight from the Palace of Auburn Hills. Rich Mahata and Arnie Rosenthal ringside. James Stoney, former two-time world champion. Won the middleweight championship in 1991 with an 11th round KO of Michael Nunn. Right in Nunn's hometown of Davenport, Iowa. Made six successful title defenses. And two years later, defeated Iran Barkley in a spectacular performance to win the Super Middleweight Championship. Made three successful defenses before losing the crown to Roy Jones Jr. Willis in his career, 21 victories, two defeats, one draw. And this isn't the same Willis that fought Cedillo. At least he's not fighting Tony the way that he fought Cedillo. No jab left in there whatsoever. He's in survival mode. He's looking for the one lucky punch. James Tony, though, even at 179 pounds, has to feel very good about this performance. And, and Tony beginning to actually pot shot him and landing those pot shots. Everything landing this round for James Tony. Very accurate round for the former champion. James trying, almost pinioned his opponent on the ropes. <laughs> Willis got out of there, and James <laughs> threw a big smile down here. James, of course, had that well-publicized spat with his uh, manager, Jackie Callen, after he lost the title. It looked as though the two might split, but they're back together. Callen, of course, here with him tonight. And, Rich, it could be nothing more than James Tony being young at the time, 25, I don't think he even turned 26 when he fought Jones. Did he know how to deal with defeat? Did anything ever prepared him for that? He took it out on Jackie. They seem to be happy now back together. He didn't blame the Montel Griffin loss on her. That was about the first punch that Tony has missed in this round. Wild to the right. I think at this point, yeah, very wild. He feels that he can get away with a little carelessness right now. Throw a right from that far on the outside. The guy he was fighting was a little bit more experienced or not so banged up. Wide open for a left hook. Right hand over the top by Tony. Willis just has no answer for him. I'm trying to catch the eye of Willis' corner to see what their intention is right now. There's no reason to really let this go on. Well, you mentioned a couple of rounds ago, and I wondered the same thing, that he has a puncher's chance, but he's not punching. No, and, and he, at this point, he can't breathe. He winks at Tony as Tony goes walking back. I think right now, even Carl Willis knows this is about it. If you're Carl Willis and you realize you're in a situation where the fight is barely more than half over at this point, it's got to be kind of a nightmare for you. I think he's in a place right now. I know Willis, he's got a lot of heart. He's a very tough kid. I think he's, he won't quit. I think he's hoping his corner quits it for him. He's looking for them to stop it. You take a look at Tony here in six-round action, Rick. I mean, Carl Willis is coming, moving in on the inside. He's got nothing coming in. 
And you take a look at Tony slip here. Oh, Willis slips. Tries to turn his back. Nothing really much happening there. Round seven. Schedule for ten in this big, big crowd. Let's have a roar here at the Palace of Auburn Hills. 18,165, the official announced attendance. Hey, if nothing enjoying. else, at the end of this fight, they're going to have to give Carl Willis a big hand. He's taking the beating of his life. Had a left hook there by Tony. Catches Willis rushing in there with the right as well, Rich. And another warning from Dale Grable. Watch the head on, on Carl Willis. He's already had one boy taken away for unsportsmanlike conduct. They should give him a few points, though, for hard right now. If they can quit at any time and not be ashamed. Take quite a beating here. Trying to move out of harm's way, but seems wherever he turns, James Tony is in front of him. And the corner of Willis still screaming at him to jab, jab, jab. And I think that nose is broken. Let's take a look. That's not the shape of Willis's nose when he came in this evening. for the moment, one of the few times in the fight, really, and, and not bleeding profusely. Now the blood begins to trickle a little bit out of it. Momentary rally by Willis, who grabs Tony and smacks him on the behind three times. You know, these guys were sparring partners. There was a lot of bad blood, bad talk, as they're always just coming into a fight. Right now, Willis has a tremendous amount of respect for Tony, and Tony, I believe, in his own way, is wondering what's keeping Willis up and has developed an enormous amount of respect for Carl Willis. Rally here by Tony. Willis is just outclassed by the former two-time champion. Good right hand by Tony. He's landing all of the punches, but he has yet to score a knockdown in this fight. Body shots and a big flurry of punches by Tony. Half a minute to go in round seven. What about Tony's punching power at this weight, Ernie? You know, first of all, I just want a blanket statement. When fighters move up in weight, sometimes that's a euphemism for don't like to train, let me keep moving up. And we've seen Tony go from 60 to 68 to 75. And I just don't think he could. So far, he hasn't shown the punching power at 175 pounds that he had at the lighter weights. We'll be back with that round eight in a moment. Bell for round eight. Carl Willis a little slow getting off the stool. I wondered how much he wanted to get off the stool, really, to come out for this round. He has three rounds to go to try to go the distance with... James lights out Tony, who is apparently pitching a shutout so far. Oh, he's pitching a shutout. He's pitching a no-hitter. Good left hand by Tony. That one hurt Willis. I that can't talk hurt Willis. And I can't applaud Willis's corner for letting him go out there. That, that one really puffed up his eye as well. Take a look at the right eye of Willis now. Puffing. His nose perhaps broken. Has been bleeding the whole fight. That left hook really hurt Willis. Now he gets back on his horse again. Good left hook to the body by Tony. Who is simply doing his job in there. Continues to pour it on. Another left hook to the body. Yeah, Tony also, right now, it would be a good time to take a look at who the three light heavyweight champions are. Virgil Hill, Mike McCallum, and Henry Masca. And you've got to say right now, you could be looking at the uh, rubber match between... Tony and McCallum at 175 pounds. It'd be an interesting fight. Well, they fought twice. Oh, boy, Willis is in trouble. A draw and a decision victory for Tony. Willis is in real trouble this round. He looks like he's ready to go to me. And he's taking the beat. Left hook by Tony, who's unmerciful. And his corner's just sitting there. Maybe Dale Grable will step in and stop the bout at this point. He's going to have gonna, a 
doctor take a look, Richard. A good call. I'm looking over at, at Willis's corner. They should know better. He's got better than Rick Connie in his corner. We are splattered ourselves here at ringside with the blood of Carl Willis, who's just taking a pummeling in there. says no the fight is over well Dale better make a signal and let everybody know that point to the winner please and let him know that he's the winner and let this youngster know he's the loser Dale Grable now we'll walk over to James Tony and raise his hand I believe that's it the fight is over Carl Willis wanted to fight more and the doctor said it was enough but I think uh, everybody here could see that and James Tony is back in the winner's circle once again Strong performance, I thought, by Tony. You know, Rich, it's a time like this, so you take a look. That you were mentioning would he fight Mike McCallum now at 175 pounds. It's important to point out that they didn't fight at 168. Both of their fights took place at 160 pounds. And they, so that both of them will have bypassed fighting each other at 68 and wind up fighting at 175 pounds. <laughs> Let's take a look at the end of the fight now. When James Tony was just pouring it on, and Carl Willis was brave, refusing to go down. Look at this pummeling by James Tony. One of the rare misses there by Tony. That left hook straightened him up. Another left hook bent him over the ropes. Another left hook by Tony. Finally, Dale Grable got between the two. And a merciful stopping. Sometimes, you know, a fighter should even go down on his own to get that rest. Well, he was brave. Foolhardy, perhaps. Never got off tonight. That jab that I've seen him use before to keep other fighters off just never got started. And James Tony, on the other hand, very good win, impressive win. Stop a two-fight losing streak and uh, maybe gets his career back on track. We will be back to get the official announcement from Jimmy Lennon Jr. We'll do that when we return to Prime Championship Boxing. As we go to commercial break, let's take a look at our winner, James Lights Out Tony. Tony has just stopped Carl Willis. He goes to 45-2-2. That's his 30th knockout. Willis drops to 21-3-1. A very impressive win for Tony. Stopping the two-fight losing streak. Carl Willis never really getting started. Looking for that jab and movement that he said he was going to give. Never really got on it. And now we're going to go up to the ring with Jimmy Lennon with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one minute, 42 seconds in round number eight. This bout has been stopped on advice of the ringside position. The winner by way of technical knockout, James Lights Out Tony. Could have seen the fight stop a whole lot sooner. And we're going to go up to Rich Murata, who's with James Tony, and he'll be talking about what's in James Tony's future. Take it away, Rich. All right, thank you, Arnie. And uh, James, very impressive performance. Nice to be back in the winner's circle again. Yeah, it, feels, huh? it feels damn good, you know. So I should be along all along. But, you know, I feel the wrestling is on me tonight. It's all going on me slowly. I'll be ready. I'll be champion six months. I guarantee it. Well, you look like you were pretty sharp tonight. How did it feel in there? I wouldn't, I wouldn't chop as I want to be. Another fight, I'll be ready. I'll be sharp. I'll be ready for McCallum, Virgin Hill. Whoever will give me a shot at the title, I'm taking it. It looked as though you pretty much methodically just kind of broke him down, broke your well, opponent down in every area of the game. Yeah, definitely. You know, I've, you know, I've been trying to work through like how, how I used to be on the middle way when I first won the Super Bowl title, just dissect the fighters. And um, Kyle was tough. He took some shots. I got a little anxious at the end there. Got a little wild, crazy. I was anxious to knock this guy out. But we got the job done. James, how did you feel at 179 tonight? What was it like carrying that weight in the ring tonight? I feel pretty good, you know. I'm, I'm strong. I feel strong as a weight. And I had no problems. But like I said, I'm, I'm not going to go up and wait and check my third title, which I will, you know. 
I, got, I, know, I know Arnie down there. I know he's trying to uh, manage after Hendrick. That's right. So we got a date April 30th. Just make sure you, you show up. <laughs> oh, I'll be there now. <laughs> All right. You know, after you're done with him, I'm going to knock you out. All right. <laughs> so I want your job. Well, well, let's ask Jackie. Let's bring Jackie Callan here. Jackie, uh, keeping James very busy. I guess that's up to the game plan right now. Huh? Well, the main thing is to get him back, get that title, the next one. You okay? <laughs> okay, anyway. He likes to stay busy. That's how we got where we where we got in the first place, by staying busy, fighting every month, and we're going to try to fight nine times this year. And we ain't breaking up, so everybody get that shot your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be together forever. Well, we, James, we did mention there during the course of the fight that I just can't think of any champion, really, who has stayed as busy as you have done, especially fighting at the level that you have fought at in the past few years. It, you continue to do that. Some people said, and I even saw this in print, maybe James should take a vacation after the Martel Griffin fight for a while. Go relax and gather himself together. Well, I'll take a vacation after the first shot of wins for four months. That kind of slowed my game down a lot. But, I, you know, I won't do it again. I, won't, I fought twice to fight this year. I got seven more to go. <laughs> All right. And you're, you're promising a championship Ooh, before the year is yeah. out, right? Knockout. Lights out this night, baby. Watch out. I'm coming for the lightweight championship soon. All right. There he is. There he is, James Tony. We thank him for being with us. Congratulations. Let's go back down to Arnie Rose.